Hey, folks, this is what's coming. It's the Rebecca Gordon Now Insurance Podcast. That's right. All your questions, all your concerns. We're going to talk about insurance, what's happening in the market, how to make more money, what do we hate, do we love the carriers, do we not love the carriers, on and on and on. Whoever thought insurance could be so much fun. So stay tuned. Remember, you're going to want to tune in to Insurance Now with Rebecca Gordon. Welcome, everybody, to Insurance Now with Rebecca Gordon. Today we're going to talk about the dual SNP market and why this market is not only probably the most exciting and fastest growing market in the Medicare Advantage arena, earning you a lot of ka but really what's what's the deal behind it? Why, why are carriers talking a lot about this market? So sit back, relax, take notes. Hopefully you're on a great drive someplace or you're working out. That'd be kind of cool if you're working out listening to me. Probably I need to work out. And just listen, because this is a market I've been really following and trying to figure out. And I think we're starting to make some headway. So what you're going to find with several of these podcasts are uh, series. So with the dual market... We are going to have some guests the next week, so keep listening. And if you're not in this market, I'm going to tell you what, you've got to get into this market. Uh, You need to push yourself because this is where you're going to see uh, the majority of the growth from these carriers. So this is what I like to say is power up. Let's do this. Nice. So the dual SNP market, well, that stands for dual special needs. So what is it? It's a health plan designed, health plans designed for your senior folks who are on Medicare and Medicaid. So they're older people, typically older, who are on a super tight budget. And when you hear the word Medicaid, the first thing I want you to commit to memory is this. You are not expected to become a Medicaid guru. All right. I don't want you to think that, oh my God, I'm not going to get into this market because I don't know a thing about Medicaid, nor do I want to learn anything about Medicaid. So strike that from your memory, from your thought pattern right now. (laughs) Okay. That is my psycho laugh guy. But listen, that's the truth. Because when I first started entertaining this market, I could understand the fact that you have low income seniors. All right, and there should be a special plan for them. But then when people start throwing in certain things like Quimby, Quimby Plus, Slimbies, losing Medicaid, qualifying for Medicaid, blah, 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 blah. Each state uh, sets their own guidelines for Medicaid. That intimidated the snikey out of me. So I, uh, I, I, I steered clear because it just made me uncomfortable. But then I would see carriers especially this year, really start to talk about this market. And I thought, I need to get into it. I can see how it's going to be beneficial. And for myself, I had to be able to, to, to get over the, uh, the fear. So thing number one, what I want you to write down is, I'm not going to be a Medicaid expert. And I'm cool with that. The carriers have made it super easy because your client has to qualify And they've made it super easy for you to call into 800 numbers by giving uh, the carrier your client's name, Medicare number, social security number, like phone, uh, not a phone number, but uh, what else do they need? Birthday, just some basic stuff. And then they'll tell you, yeah, go ahead and write them. They're eligible or nope, don't write them. They're not eligible. So by putting in those features has made it a heck of a lot easier Uh, for agents to get into this market with confidence. All right. So what is it? Well, it is, like I said, it's a health plan designed for seniors who are very low budget, low income. How low? Medicaid typically is $1,000 or less for an individual a month. So a lot of agents get a little bit nervous at the thought of working with 
clients in this financial category, right? And there's been a lot of misconception. And honestly, honestly, some of the things you've heard are absolutely true. Absolutely. And that's okay. And this market is not for everybody. Um, But if after listening to this and you're starting to think that, you know what? This is totally me. I can do this. You will make a lot of money. You will make a lot of money and uh, you will be thankful that you did. Actually, I like to call this a touchdown moment. Touchdown! Yeah, that's it, that's what it is. Kind of a touchdown moment when you're like, okay, I can do this. I know what to expect. I'm not going to be a Medicaid expert. Let's do it. So the dual SNP market, the reason why it's gotten crazy, crazy, crazy popular this year. And why do I say that? You know, my sister Sylvia and I, we go to a lot of um, uh, agency meetings. So because we're an FMO, an NMA, all those uh, terms you may or may not be familiar with, all those terms basically mean is there's, uh, we're at the top. So the insurance company comes to us and they say, we've got this great product. Go out and find the distribution. We recruit the agents. Um and so it, it's basically we're at the top of the hierarchy. So we go to a lot of meetings, a lot of industry meetings. And this year, um, it's called like the AEP rollout. Uh, it was interesting because all the big carriers, Anthem, United Healthcare, um, all well, they were all talking about the dual market, duals. Now, don't be confused with Medicare Advantage. So Medicare Advantage market is the, the plans that people buy. You have open enrollment of course, which is uh, October to December. You have to certify for those plans and you can switch once a year uh, unless you have an SCP. Well, the dual market, again, is for folks who are uh, 65 or over, typically, and on a really super tight budget. And the carriers are really starting to gravitate towards this market because A, and this is probably one of the biggest reasons. Rescuer is going to grow no matter what. Service tight. Whoa. Is because carriers make the most money. They make 19% more money with this market than they do with the Medicare Advantage market. So here you have a huge territory of of millions and millions and millions of, of seniors who might only be on Medicaid. And that's what we see. So the carriers are like, wow, there's a huge untapped market out there. We're going to get reimbursed higher from CMS, and that's just a total win-win. Another reason why the carriers are all gaga right now about this market is is the expansion opportunity. So if you looked at AEP this year and you got your heat maps, you know, on the MA side, there wasn't tremendous growth. Because a lot of the carriers have already been in the counties or they get out of the counties. They all follow suit. So if reimbursement is super high, they're going to be in those counties. If the cost of health care is manageable and the carrier can make money, they stay in. If it's not, they pull out and blah, blah, blah. But with the dual SNP market, now the carriers, whereas maybe last year or the year before, they didn't have any DSNP plans. Now they're starting to say, whoa. We can really get some massive expansion under our belt, which is a great recruiting and marketing opportunity for them. So they have expansion where they can grow and they're getting more reimbursement. Boom, baby. That's your recipe for success. And that's why at all these meetings where my sister and I was, that's what they were all talking about. So once I got that wrapped around my head, like, hey, got it. They're making money. There's a lot of opportunity. We really got to be educating the agent to get into it. So what is it? It's health insurance for older people who are on a super tight budget. Why are carriers so pumped? They're going to make more money. And there is no shame in that. And if you can make money, that is a win-win. But the bottom line with these plans, if you've never looked at them, is that they are awesome for the consumer. So I'm going to take you on a little journey of myself, Rebecca, and this is my DSNP story. So last year I thought, huh, I had heard of some people uh, 
working in food pantries, right? And they're like, I'm gonna I'm working these food pantries with the and everybody's super low income and you can write a ton of insurance because it's a captive audience and this uh this group of people um they really have no options and it's just really easy it's like sh- shooting fish in a barrel i was like well wow my god i could see dollar signs sign me up so i set out to try to figure out just how in the heck do i actually get involved in a food pantry I had never been to a food pantry. I had, I had, uh, I had no idea if there was even one in Noblesville, Indiana. So I googled food pantries, and do you know that I found forty-five food pantries in Hamilton County? Blew me away. Now Hamilton County, if you're not up on your Hamilton County trivia, it is the wealthiest county in the state of Indiana. So my county has Carmel. Uh, which will have a lot of the Eli Lilly executives, Colt players, um, Fishers. We're, we're on the north side, the donut side of Indianapolis. So there's more money in this county than any other county. So that totally blew me away. How could a place with this uh, much money per se per capita have 45 food pantries? So what I did was I reached out to one. And I, I, I said, hey, I, I, wanna, I want to come and volunteer. And I really expected these people to be overjoyed, right? Like overjoyed to have my help. And they really kind of sized me up. And uh, they said, well, come this week and, and we'll see what we can do. And I thought, well, oh, that's kind of snarky, you know. I'm already counting my money. Like I'm going to write a bunch of these. So I get there. And again, I'm like, yeah, I'd like to help. And I really felt like an outsider. I really felt like the person running the pantry was just kind of sizing me up. Um, Almost didn't really take my actions as genuine. So the first day I'm there, and I want to be under the radar, right? I want to be low key. I'm not even going to talk insurance. I just want to observe. I wanted to see who goes to the pantry. What do these people look like? Are they old? Are they young? What do they buy? What does uh, a food pantry even look like? It was a total learning experience for myself. So the the clients come in and I call them all clients. And what would happen is I would get a sheet of paper and they would say, they would match you up with a customer. First off, our food pantry, the one that I volunteer at, is amazing. It is the size of a, a convenience store. We have carts. We have fresh produce, which is key. Fresh produce in a pantry is amazing. We have aisles, canned goods, meats, treats. I was absolutely speechless at the setup of this pantry. Then I started observing the people. There were a lot of older people there. Some didn't look so bad. Some looked really down on their luck. It was interesting because every time they called a new customer... They have to wait until their name is called, and when they when they're called, they come up, and you know I I always shake their hand. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna take you through. And the reason why they have someone take them through the aisles is because you can only take so much, right? You can have so many cans, so many cereals, so many apples, so many breads, and it's basically my job to make sure that we follow all the rules. So I just start talking to the people, and it was I opening it blew me away i had one guy there who had the craziest looking uh hearing aid i had ever seen in my life stuck in his ear like half of it was sticking out almost like an antenna i don't know where the heck he got this thing but it was old 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 for all i know he might have actually tried to make it and he was super cool he hardly had any teeth and we were having fun going up and down the aisles and on this first day, we had um, we had a really cool give giveaway. Everybody got toothbrushes, and I said, "Hey, I want you to take a toothbrush." And he smiled. He said, "Why? I only have like four teeth." And I said, "Well, we're going to take care of those four teeth and get yourself a toothbrush." At the end of the day, I had probably worked with eight different customers. They all had their own stories. At first, the majority of them didn't even want to look at me. And I I didn't know if that was, they were um, ashamed that they were there. I don't know if it was, maybe they didn't like me right off the bat. 
I have a feeling it was because maybe they just didn't know if they could trust me. And that, when I started to realize that that was kind of the big, my big hurdle was just because I have a product that's designed for these folks to give them incredible benefits, all that I'm really is, is, is kind of like a shark on these prey. And that's why the person at the food pantry wasn't that hot on me. I don't think A, she thought I would come. Then I don't think she thought I would stay my session. I sure as heck know she didn't think I'd come the next week or the next week. After about four times volunteering, I completely dismissed the idea. It wasn't even on my mind to talk to them about insurance. I was really just starting to fall in love with these people and what their stories were. I had people who had suffered strokes and they had been on disability. I had people who were widowers, lost income, and now they were on Medicaid. I had other accidents, more disability. I had vets. I had just a potpourri of situations. Situations that thankfully, knock on wood, I've never experienced, nor will I ever experience. And they come here once a week to get food, to get basic necessities. These are the folks who are underserved. And in the course of it, I started to see people whose glasses were old, held together with tape, my guy with the hearing aid, poor teeth, just certain things. People talking to me about not having a car. One of my clients, it was super hot this day, and I helped them out, and I said, okay, where's, where's your ride? And they said, oh, I'm, I'm just going to have to walk today. And I said, don't you have a car? And they're like, oh, no, I... I just have to walk down to these apartments. And it was super far away. Not only was this person old, they had a ton of groceries, and it was like in the 90s. And that's when I thought, what the heck? How the? Then I started to connect the dots. Well, heck, if you don't have a car to get yourself home, how the heck are you going to get yourself to a doctor's appointment? How are you going to get yourself to the pharmacy to get your prescriptions? And it, the more I started to work in the, pantry, in the pantry, the more I started to see how the DSNP plans would help so many of these people an unbelievable amount. So what do I mean by that? So with a dual plan, you have your hospital and your doctors, all the normal stuff of a Medicare Advantage plan. But where they really supersize these dual plans is they add so many other benefits that this clientele needs, such as transportation. And we just saw a war this year with carriers trying to be the superior being of the transportation benefit. I saw some carriers had 30 one-way trips. Some had 64 one-way trips, which means you could go to your doctor's office so you would call like uh, Lyft. They would come pick you up. They would take you to your doctor's office. Then they would bring you home. It's a built-in feature. No additional cost. Keep in mind, all dual plans traditionally are $0 premium. They're zero. And all these additional benefits, the secret sauce that they build in, they're zero. So here you have a transportation benefit to get people to the doctor. You see, this group of folks they have higher utilization. They are sicker. They have higher pre-existing. Why? Because they don't have the funds to A, eat right, take their meds consistently, get themselves to the doctor. A bunch of them don't even have a doctor. They're kind of like the forgotten souls, the underserved, the underrepresented. And that's why it, they may not be your cup of tea. You may not want to work in a pantry. You may not want to volunteer in a senior housing unit. And that's cool. That's no problem at all. However, if you are in the Medicare Advantage market, you should at least know this market and be teamed up with someone to refer these folks to. Because I'll tell you, these folks refer their friends. And they are loyal. If you sell the plans right, you stay on top of them, you massage them, they will refer their friends in that housing unit. Their friends that they meet at the food pantry. Their friends from church. 
It can be a bonanza. One of the MA carriers this year, which just rocked it all, they had unlimited transportation. Unlimited. So you can go to and from the doctor as many times as you want, as many times as you need. You see, if we can take this group who has high utilization, they tend to be the sickest. If we can either keep their health the same or make them better, teach them not to use the ER as their doctor, if we can do that, then we start to grab hold of our healthcare crisis and, and, and turn the costs in the opposite direction. That's the whole goal. So when carriers get into this market because they're seeing dollar signs, they're like, look, we, we went in. There's a ton of people we can write. We're going to get reimbursed more. Oh, by the way, you can enroll duels all year long. You can enroll them all year long. But the carriers have to be able to prove that they are making a difference. So this group, this group of people with the dual market, they're, uh, they need to be touched more. The carriers touch them more. They'll reach out. They'll make more outbound phone calls. Some carriers, United Healthcare this year announced, that it's kind of like a companion call. They're just going to call so many times a month and just talk to the client. Why? Because they know that this group, this underserved group, if they're isolated, if they're a shut-in, they know that by not having any interaction with someone else, their health deteriorates. And if their health deteriorates, what does that mean? Higher health care cost. So what do they do? They make outbound calls. It doesn't take anything away from the agent. It's just another really awesome feature to reach out. So United Healthcare actually has their average is four years retention on this dual market, which is awesome. It is absolutely awesome because they do everything right. And they, they, are, they really lay the platform for how to retain these clients. So you've got benefits like transportation. You have dental. Dental, which will include uh, not only cleanings, but dentures. You'll have vision for glasses, hearing, hearing aids. Some carriers came out with uh, the essential health benefits. Anthem came out with that this year which were benefits in addition to the ones already listed in the policy. Um, Things like food. So if you were discharged out of the hospital, um, they would have so many meals delivered to your house for X amount of time. In fact, you know, Anthem was the first carrier to really capitalize on this new CMS change. So CMS last year... In April, they came out and they said, look, carriers, you guys can all have this new benefit called essential health benefits. And basically what that means is whatever you decide, it can't be a doctor visit, anything with a doctor, but it has to be other benefits that can improve the quality of clients. That's an essential health benefit. So it it, it left the interpretation up to the carriers to decide what exactly was that. And because it was such short time, I mean, April and the carriers have to have everything filed by June, nobody was able to take that new language by CMS and do anything with it except Anthem. And Anthem crushed it with their essential health benefits. And basically, they're the only carrier... That was able to say, okay, we can jump on this and we can really stand out. And the way we're going to do it is create these additional benefits that consumers can choose. And they're all benefits that will help improve a person's quality of life. So what are those things? Eh, let's looky here. So Anthem came out with the healthy food deliveries, which we talked about. More transportation. So this transportation would also take you to Silver Sneakers or a pharmacy. A personal home home helper. I love this. So a personal home helper was somebody that would come to your house and help you um, with just basic chores. House cleaning, cooking, also companionship. You'd have up to 124 hours per day. 
assistive devices. So a $500 allowance. So this would be things like, you know, for your bathroom, um, ramps, you know, all those railings, things to help uh, make life easier, reduce avoidable emergencies, um, air conditioners, air purifiers. You know, you take a lot of seniors who might live in the inner city and they're in a, a really old building. Maybe they don't have air conditioning. Well, my God, if it's 90 degrees outside, just imagine how hot it is for them inside. With this benefit, this $500 annual allowance, your customer could get an air conditioning unit. If they have asthma, they could get an air purifying unit. Another one is a day center visit. This is awesome. So let's say that you um, you need to uh, drop somebody off so that they can have supervision, assistance during the day. This gives that person uh, one day per week up to eight hours per day to just get dropped off, kind of like adult daycare. They also came out with alternative medicine, acupuncture, therapeutic massage to help manage pain. Nobody else, nobody else capitalized on this. So Anthem, they really jumped on it. And in the central states, they just really, in my opinion, um, crushed the dual market because not only were they $0, obviously, and they had all these other benefits built in, dental, vision, food, uh, podiatry is a huge one. But they also had the essential extra where the consumer could pick one based on what they needed. No additional charge, but it's all around the same goal. Get healthy, stay healthy, improve your life, improve the quality of your life. And that's the cool thing about the dual SNP market. And that's why I say, you know, it's not necessarily for everyone. This is a market that you will be very involved in. You will take many phone calls. Uh, when you set the initial appointment, you always want to make sure if there's another family member that helps uh, with their decisions that they're there. Uh, this is not a one and done. And if you are a one and done agent, that's cool. Keep doing your thing. I hope hope you do it with us. Um, but if, if you like to see these people who just really don't have the same advantages that you and I do and for the first time help them get a primary care doctor and show them how they can take a transportation there and back and help them get new glasses they haven't had their eyes checked help them with their hearing aid help them with their teeth it's amazing I mean that's really a fan, that is the best feeling there is to help others. I always tell my kids, if you want to live in a great community, you invest in your community. If you want to have a great community, you invest in that community. So I love to volunteer at the pantries. And what I actually do is my sister-in-law tends to write them all. She wears a lanyard um, that just advertises that she is an agent. She does that compliantly, of course. Um, and because we have been there and we show up and we show up. You know, it's funny. The first day I went to go volunteer at the pantry, um, the pastor who heads up the pantry said, oh, we have somebody from a carrier here. And I said, oh, I said, well, where are they? And they were sitting in kind of the rec center, sitting. They were sitting the whole time on their phone. They had like a trifold banner up. And that was it. They never once moved from their seat. Not once. They came in with the exact same mentality I did. Oh, this will be like shooting fish in a barrel. All these people, they're uneducated. They're poor. Oh my God, I'm going to write so many of them. Ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. And what was interesting, nobody talked to her. Nobody talked to her. Here I'm in the other room going up and down the aisles uh, in this pantry that was hot. I'll tell you that, sweating my butt off, having a blast because I'm talking to everybody. I'm just talking, finding out their stories, having fun, earning trust, right? I'm just earning trust. That person never came back. And I'm glad they didn't come back. They should have been volunteering. They should have been investing. They should have been 
doing more than just wanting to write the business because these folks need the most help. So how do you get involved with the duels? It's a lot of community outreach and pantries are a great place and a, a perfect spot to find out a, where are the pantries? Google it. Google how many pantries are in your county and see who pops up. Go visit them. You're not the first agent to call these pantries. Trust me. They probably won't take your call. They may not be friendly because they're looking at you, what I have found, kind of like somebody, again, who's just preying on their customers. So you need to see their hours. You need to go check it out. You may not want to volunteer at every one and find one to volunteer and just learn about it. Just observe. Because if they don't trust you, you're not going to get anywhere. All right. So what do we think the future of the dual market is for this open enrollment? I think it'll be huge. I think it'll continue to grow. I think it's a market that if you put your toes in, but you pulled your toes back out because you're afraid of, you know, I mean, let's just be honest, working with poor old people, broke, uh, I get it. And, and anybody who tells you that they didn't initially think that is a liar because everybody has. Um, I think you need to, you know, you can kind of pick and choose also where, where you want to work or, or how involved you want to get. There's some really super cool organizations. Now this is awesome that I've seen. So like Oak Street Clinics. And I'm going to have them, um, on my show in probably the next couple weeks about their vision how they came up with the clinics, why they're so successful. But you see Oak Street, they have clinics right now in Chicago, um, Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, Detroit. They just opened up four more in Cleveland, Philadelphia. And these are clinics where they go to the poorest section, all right, the most underserved, uh, highest utilization. You know, basically folks have, they have, they're just not on top of their health. They just don't have a priority on their health. And because maybe they were just raised that way, they don't have the funds to seek out health care. You know, I've had my own health issues. Thank God, nothing huge, but enough where I'm going to go, I'm going to move hell and high water to find out what's going on and find the best course of action, the most aggressive, right? I'm very aggressive that way. I'm not going to just sit back and see what happens, but I can afford to do that. And money, money can make everything happen. And if you're making $1,000 or less, you know, all those, all those options are gone for you. So Oak Street, and I don't want to give away their whole story, but what's so cool about them is, is they put these clinics, and these clinics are gorgeous, first off. These clinics are gorgeous. When I first heard about the clinics, I didn't know what to expect. You know, they're in these uh, underserved areas, so I was a little leery. So if you're in any of these areas I just said, uh, go check them out. You will be floored. They're gorgeous. But they have a system set up where they pick up the clients and bring them to the clinic. So when a new client comes to the clinic, um, they're put into one of four categories. One would be, you're in pretty good shape. You're going to be a low utilizer to category four You've got some conditions, you know, maybe you're diabetic, heart, cancer, whatever. We're going to want to see you very often. And so what happens is Oak Street, they get all the money. They get all the reimbursement. They take all of it and then they manage the health care. They manage the health of the client. And what they are able to do is they are able to improve their client's health. They're also able to drop ER visits in half. They're able to improve their diabetics dramatically. How do they do this? They're incredibly hands-on. So when that client comes in and they're in one of those four categories, if they're a low utilizer, they may only want to see the client, we'll say, maybe once or twice a year. And they call them and they'll say, hey, Rebecca, it's time for your annual physical. We will pick you up. So they have these super cool um, green Oak Street cars. They go out into the community. They pick you up and they call you like, Every day for a week, just reminding you, pick you up. They bring you to your appointment. When your appointment is done, they take you home. If you're a high utilizer, 
And let's say they want to see you four times a month, two times a month, whatever the case is. By God, they are on that phone. They are confirming, 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 picking you up. If you miss it, they find you, they bring you in. And even though they're making money, which is great on their end, you're getting healthier. You're getting better. And all of their stats and statistics prove this. So Oak Street is so cool because they're going into these underserved areas and they do a tremendous amount of community outreach. So they got to let the community know that they're here and what they're doing. And they have uh, agent of the day set up. So if this is something that sounds interesting to you, you know, once you go through their program, um, there's a good chance they'll put you in the clinic to work with these clients, but they're very picky. They're not looking for the one and done. They're looking for the, the agent who, who, it's really invested with these folks. So we're seeing more clinics pop up around the country. And again, it's all driven by the need. And if we can improve these people's um, overall quality, then that has a massive impact on our healthcare cost. So it's a win-win. It's a fascinating it's a fascinating uh, machine to really witness. And that's why this market is so huge. You know, you're not hearing a lot about, well, I mean, you hear a lot about Medicare Advantage, but it's it's Medicare Advantage. You understand it. There could be a premium. Typically, they're HMOs. You could have a couple PPOs. And, you know, basically, your your questions for a new carrier with a, an MA plan is going to be, you know, what are the co-pays, the out-of-pocket, the network, and that's it. They're all pretty, they're all pretty standardized, but you get into this dual SNP market, this D SNPs, Medicare, Medicaid. And although, you know, the, 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 the basic functions are the same, typically they're always $0 premium. Um, you're starting to see all this super cool secret sauce because these carriers want the business and the higher the star ratings that these carriers have, the more money they make and they're taking this money and reinvesting it into these plans. And that's why you you see that. You see that with all these crazy benefits just being supersized this year. And that's why it's so exciting because it's a huge win-win for the client. Huge win-win. It's a win-win for the agent. It's a win-win for the carrier. It's a win-win for the overall healthcare system. And there's millions of people out there who are just on Medicaid. And they're, they think Medicaid is great. And they think... Well, a big problem, this isn't a problem, but as we, as we dig deeper into, into this market, I'll, I'm going to bring some, um, really seasoned agents on to talk about, you know, what are the big pitfalls? What to be aware of? What are clients concerned about? And the biggest concern that I hear is clients saying, look, I don't want to enroll in anything. I don't want to possibly screw up my Medicaid. I like my Medicaid. It's all zeros. I'm happy. I don't. And, and people are scared of that. And that's where as an agent, you need to, you need to uncover that right off the bat and say, this works in conjunction. This is in addition to a lot of people will say, how do you make all my, my zeros better? You know, with Medicaid, I'm, I have zeros, everything. And, uh, my brother-in-law who sells a lot of duels, he likes to say, I just give you more zeros. I give you more zeros. That's how you make zeros better. You get more of them with all these other benefits that are built in, uh, it, it, it's just crazy cool. It's been such a fun journey for me to about two years ago is when I probably started this to, 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 to first, it was amazing to me to find out how many people were, were in this segment that blew me away. That positively blew me away. Again, I've never grown up like that. Thankfully I've never, um, you know, my situation with, with uh, growing up or, um, even my family now, you know, we've, we've never been so tight on, on funds that this was a concern, you know, ever. So to, to a realize how many food pantries were in my community blew me away to really start talking to the people blew me away to find out that they didn't even, they didn't go to the doctor because they didn't have transportation. So that's why the ERs um, explode. You know, that blew me away. 
And then to see all these cool benefits that the carriers have created to help these folks. And then to see these folks after they enrolled and to have them say, wow, this was awesome. I haven't been able to hear in years. My glasses are, I feel so great in these glasses. You know, a lot of these folks feel embarrassed. They feel, um, they just feel forgotten, ashamed. And, and you can totally tell, you can tell in their body language. You know, last weekend, my kids and I, uh, we, we do a lot of volunteering in the pantry. I have all my kids volunteer in the pantry. I love to volunteer in the pantry. Um, but then we do, we volunteer with other organizations. So another great organization to Google is Good Samaritans. And Good Samaritans here uh, where I live um, is a, an organization that really supports people who are underserved. And with uh, mobile food pantries or we just ended the big holiday shopping spree. And what that is is they go to the 4-H fairgrounds, this huge uh, warehouse, half of it's food, the other half is uh, clothing and toys. And you can go through and you can Christmas shop, right? You can Christmas shop, You some of the toys are used, a lot of them are used, some are new, same with the clothes. And then if you come over to the food section, uh, we have a big box of uh, non-perishables, a, a ham is in there, you can get dog and cat food, a Christmas tree, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. That's all I can say. And my kids love doing this. And I've taught them with uh, every client that comes to us. You know, we shake their hand. We say Merry Christmas. And we just start some small talk. And from the time when you first meet the person to, you know, them not even looking at you to the time you go out to the car and you help them load all their goods in, it, it is just the most rewarding, uh, satisfying feeling there is to know that you're giving back. And that's what this market is. It's about giving back. So look, you can tell I'm all hot and heavy and super excited about the dual market. Um, but Good Samaritan is a great place to start to get yourself plugged in. These folks will help people, um, you know, like if it's uh, super cold outside and we're going through the God awful cold snap, people's heat are going to get shut off. Their electricity could get shut off. Um, they help with housing. They help with everything. It, 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 it was amazing to me how many organizations are out there completely designed for this part of the population. Now, look, I'm not going to be uh, some uh, on my soapbox saying that all these people are great and they all need help. On the senior side, yes, because you have to qualify to be a Medicaid, right? And, and I will tell you, at the pantries, I do see some people there, and they're always younger, that I wonder, why in the heck are you here? Um, and those people, I will be quite honest, bug the crap out of me because I'll notice that their nails were done or they have nice jewelry. They have a nice car. So how the heck they're coming to a pantry is absolutely beyond me. And maybe maybe their income is such that it that it warrants it. I don't know. I had to really separate that. And just focus on the seniors uh, because those are the folks I could really have the most positive impact on. So I just like to get that out there because if you're like me, you know, that thought easily could come into your mind. Like, hey, uh, whenever you have systems like this that are giving back, you will always have people take advantage of it. That, that'll happen. You just have to move past it. But somebody making $1,000 or less per month, Qualifying for Medicaid, you know, my God, that's just not a lot of money. So I like to call this a land of opportunity because that's what the dual SNP market is. It is a land of massive, massive opportunity. So the next podcast, I'm going to have some agents on to talk about the big pitfalls, uh, some of their funny stories. My God, I've heard some crazy stories. Yes, with bugs. Oh, well, who cares? Um, the D SNP market is not for the weak. Heck, the Medicare Advantage market is not for the weak. I always tell agents, if you bruise easily, if you get, you know, if you get scratched easily, you're going to go cry. This is not the market for you. Heck, maybe insurance isn't the market. This is a, an aggressive market. It's a fun market. It's a rewarding market. And I hope that I've said something today that maybe some of my energy went through this microphone out to your ears. If you're on the treadmill or you're walking or you're driving or whatever it is that you're doing, that maybe, 
Maybe you're thinking, huh, she said some things that made some sense. She said something that piqued my interest. You know, we're all straight commission, right? I'm straight commission here. And you're probably straight commission. And every year we're always looking for ways to improve our own lifestyles, how to make more money, create new uh, income streams. And if you're not looking at this market, I'm telling you, this is what you need to look at for this year. And, And I'm doing this podcast right now in December. So this is the best time. Don't call me in August. Say, Rebecca, I listened to your podcast driving cross country and wow, I think you're really super smart. <laughs> I threw, I just threw that in. Maybe you'll say that, maybe you won't. And I'm ready to get into this market. I'm going to say, wow, thanks for the compliment. You missed the boat. Let's talk in January. You're not going to enter this market in August. The time to get into this market is now. And we have so many videos, so many training videos on YouTube. So if you subscribe to our channel, Gordon Marketing, G-O-R, D-O-N, and then marketing spelled out, and then just go seek out all of the dual SNP videos or just the Medicare Advantage videos, that will give you a tremendous amount of knowledge, huge amount of knowledge. Remember what I said when we first started out? You're not going to become a Medicaid guru. I don't want you to become that. That's not your thing. And as we, like I said, as we dig deeper and deeper into this market, I'm going to break down how do you qualify the client? How do you make sure that that who you're talking to is eligible? Blah, 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 blah. We're going to go from A to Z. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. But right now, my throat is sore. So I'm going to go ahead and, and sign off on this very first one. But I want you to stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'm telling you what, folks, this is hot and heavy good stuff. So look, good selling. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you later. Bye.